Now that we know how to construct p-charts with the same subgroup size, let's take a look at what happens with p-charts when your subgroup size starts varying. In this lecture, we'll look at how unequal subgroups can affect various aspects of p-charts, and then we'll construct a p-chart given a data set with variable subgroup size. It's not always possible to have an equal subgroup size. For example, if you get a different amount of product in each time you get a shipment, you may not be able to pull the same number of samples. You may also just have different people taking samples and they might pull samples of different sizes. So if you cannot get your subgroup size equal, you're going to have to account for those differences in how big your subgroup is. When you're looking at a p-chart, your central line is calculated in the exact same way as if your subgroups are equal. So that formula doesn't change. Your control limits, on the other hand, your action, your warning limits, are going to vary as your subgroup size varies. So if you have a large subgroup, your control limits are going to move closer to your central line. If your subgroup is smaller, they move further away from your central line. And this has to do with statistics. The smaller your subgroup is, the less sure you can be about that measurement being a true estimate of your population, of your total amount of product. So that's why your control limits will tighten up as your subgroup gets bigger, because you're more sure of how accurate your estimate is from your sample. Let's look at our control limits and how they're calculated. The formulas look the same as for equal subgroups of p-charts. The only difference is this little i right here. And what that little i indicates is every single time you change subgroups, you're going to need to recalculate your action limits and your warning limits because the number in your subgroup is changing each time. And that affects your formula right here. So if you get lucky and some subgroups have the same number of samples in them, that's great. Then you can use the same numbers for your action and warning limits. However, every time your n changes for your subgroups, you're going to need to recalculate your limits, and you'll have to post those individual limits separately to your control chart. Your finished p-chart with unequal subgroup size is going to look something like this. Notice that our process average, our central line, is nice and straight. That stays the same regardless of what other else happens. But as our subgroup size changes, our control limits, you can see them start to get a little bit wiggly. So they're changing with our sample size. And so as we change from point to point, our limits are going to move in and out depending on how big our subgroup is. Again, this point right here would have a bigger sample size in the subgroup than this point in subgroup 8. Taking a look at that control chart, it can get pretty confusing to look at it. Why are the control limits moving around? What does it mean again when the control limit moves inward versus outward? It can get hard to explain to somebody and it can be hard to understand if you don't have a good background in statistics. Unfortunately, you can't calculate the varying limits ahead of time. You need to do it as each data point is collected. And that's another disadvantage with unequal subgroup sizes. There's two ways to minimize the effects of your subgroup size. One way is to use control limits for your average subgroup size, and the second way is to post several different control limits for different subgroup sizes on your chart. Let's take a look at each one of those. Here's an example of using control limits, and here it's just the upper and lower control limit, which would be the upper and lower action limit, shown on this chart. We have our average subgroup size used to calculate these upper and lower control or action limits. There's four different things that can happen here with our points. The first thing is that we have a point within our limits and our subgroup size n is less than our average size. We know that that point is in control. If we have a point outside our limits and our subgroup size is larger than our average subgroup size, we know that that point is out of control. And those two cases are based on where your control limits would be if you'd actually calculated them for the correct 
subgroup size. Here we know that the larger our subgroup gets, the smaller our control limits get. They get closer to the average. So we know this would have been outside the limits anyway had we collect, con calculated the correct limits. So we know that that point's definitely out of control. The same thing with our first point right here. We know that the control limits would be further away because our n was smaller than our average n, so it would have been in control anyway. What happens when we get close to the lines? If we have a point outside of our limits and our n is smaller than our average n, we want to check the limits because our actual control limit may be beyond this point, so we may be okay. So here we want to check our limit and say, where is our point with, in regards to our real limit? We want to do the same thing if we have a point inside the limits and our n is larger than our average n. Again, we want to check the limits and make sure the actual control limit is outside of our point here. In this case, if the point was where it was and our control limit was where the top of that dotted line was, our point's actually outside the control limits, even though it looks like it's inside the average control limit. It's actually an out of control point in this case. That's one way to handle unequal subgroup size. It can get a little bit involved with the calculations and a little bit complicated. A slightly less complicated way to deal with unequal subgroup size is posting several different limits to your control chart. So here you can calculate the limits ahead of time and you can post limits for different subgroup sizes. We've got 200, 500 in the purple, and 1000 as our subgroup size in the green. Keep in mind that when you're reading these charts, you need to know something about the actual subgroup size and where that point is in relation to the control limit that's closest to it. So let's take point 25 here. We need to know the subgroup size because if it's bigger than 500, we're out of control. But if it's somewhere around 200 or 300, this point may actually be in control. So it's important to keep that in mind when you're reading these charts with unequal subgroup size to know what's my exact subgroup size and how does that relate to what control limits are posted on my chart. In general, p-charts with unequal subgroup size can be a little bit confusing to read, and you need a good understanding of how these charts are actually constructed to properly understand and interpret them. It's easier to understand a chart with equal subgroup size. However, it's not always possible to get a chart with equal subgroup size, and so in this case, we need to take the subgroup size of each point into account so we're getting a correct reading of whether or not our process is in control.